Now, let's return to the three issues and the three leaders we showed you at the beginning of the hour, each of them facing a dizzyingly high stakes and short deadlines. Theresa May, it's March the 29th when the UK is set to leave the EU. It's also next week when she has the vote on her uh, meaningful vote on Brexit. For President Trump, it's in two days' time. Hundreds of thousands of federal workers will miss paychecks. And for President Xi, it's March the 1st when new tariffs are scheduled to kick in. Get out the iPhone or any phone, Samsung, whatever phone you like, frankly, and go to cnn.com slash join. Our question for today is, who's handling their negotiation better? Donald Trump with the shutdown, Xi Jinping with the trade talks, Theresa May with Brexit. Who is the best negotiator? Vote now, cnn.com slash join. Barry Nailbuff is the kind of expert business leaders turn to for helps in situations like this. Today, he teaches students at Yale about negotiations, innovation and game theory. Good to see you, sir. Um, so, well, there's no question these three leaders have, in some senses, by their own actions, boxed themselves in to a very, very dangerous negotiation deadline. Uh, that's true. I'd say at least for two of them, anyway. And if you had to say with Theresa May or Donald Trump, how do you view their success at what they've done? Well, I think there's a clear winner in terms of who's the worst negotiator, and that's ours. Uh, there's a line from Bernard Brook that you don't have to blow out the other person's candle to let your own shine, and that's something that Trump does not seem to understand. He's more of the Gore Vidal school, which is it's not enough to succeed, others must fail. And that aspect, not even zero sum, but negative sum, is something that is pretty much guaranteed to make for a terrible negotiation. What about Theresa May? She's in an impossible situation. I'll grant you that. She's fighting her own MPs. She's fighting the opposition. She's got a deadline, a really serious deadline, and she's decided you know, to go for broke. Go ahead, sir. I, I don't. I think it's actually a pretty easy situation, which is uh, the forced Brexit is a disaster. And if you're going to do it, you want the public behind you. And so the idea that you wouldn't have a second referendum so that either you don't go that way, or if you do, it was, well, that's what the people want, strikes me as such an obvious solution to this that uh, it's only a question to me of how can you not be doing it? That is, the solution is staring people in the face here. She's got, she's decided to put this deadline out. Uh, you know, I mean, she, obviously there's a real deadline on March the 29th. Uh, she has to get this through Parliament. She's left it till the last possible moment to put the vote to Parliament. Is that a good strategy? It is because I think that essentially the failure is what will lead to the success. That is, to me, the obvious answer is you have the second referendum. And the question is, what is it going to take for people to accept that? And when they're staring at the void and say, well, wait a second, uh, either we don't want to go this way or we don't want to go this way without giving people the chance to say, you sent us there, uh, strikes me as the obvious answer. So you have to get to the situation where people are sufficiently desperate that they are actually willing to say, we need right. a second vote. Finally, Professor, you said it right at the start of this. The, the, uh, there are only two. I assume the one you think you're taking out of this is Xi Jinping, who you, well, you seem I, to have a, a respect for his negotiating. Well, also, there's not a critical deadline. Yes, right. we have tariffs that are scheduled to come on, but if there's progress that's being made, that deadline can be pushed back. So that one is much more artificial than the EU deadline, which is determined externally and is not something that's likely right. to be changed. If you had to vote in our uh, who is handling their negotiations best, uh, as our viewers have, our viewers say Xi Jinping wins with 82%, yeah. Theresa May at 8%, Donald Trump only has 10%. Yeah, well, 10 seems high for me. Um, <laughs> you know, I would say that in the end, if Theresa May is able to get a second referendum by taking people to the brink, then she will have pulled a rabbit out of the hat, and it'll have been brilliant, and we'll look back at this and say it's amazing. So. The, the, the jury is out uh, in terms of where May is. Uh, I think the key lesson, that I had the opportunity to watch David Stern negotiate with the NBA players and the right. owners, and the key lesson there is to understand what the other side wants and actually to give it to them, not because you like them, not because you want to help them, 
but because if you give them what they want, you can get what you want. And what's so startling about the U.S. situation is it's bloody obvious what Trump wants and it's bloody obvious what the Democrats want. That is, you could provide a DACA solution. You could give Trump the wall. And the fact that he rejects solutions right. that are giving other people what looks like an obvious answer suggests to me that he actually doesn't want a solution. He wants to keep this thing as a thorn in the side, as an open, festering wound. And that's something right. you can't negotiate with. And you can't negotiate with somebody who says, I'll do a deal if, and then the deal happens or is presented to you, and they say, no, I've changed my mind. And so, uh, and that's why Mitch McConnell is in a bind, and that's why ultimately uh, we're paralyzed. Now, it strikes me that one solution is that Congress says, wait a second, we're going to do the two-thirds majority in the House and the Senate. And you do that, and Trump can say, well, I wanted the wall, I was asking for it, I insisting on it, and I got beaten up on it. Because the fact is, if he couldn't get it with Democrat, with Republican-controlled House and Senate, right. why does he think it's possible to get now? I mean, what has changed? And so you got to give something. And the nice thing is it's obvious what it is to give. And the question is, why is he so unwilling right, to do... I, 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 I'm sorry? No, 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 I was fine. Uh, we're just uh, at the end of, the, uh, of our time. Um, I, I got... Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you.